Okay, you guys, seriously. We have to film this in less than an hour and we still don't have anything. I need ideas. We can do gangster. We did that last time. We should be hick so I can show off my chest hair. I want to be a valley girl. I want to be a cat! <laughs> okay, well, obviously, we can't just come up with one idea, so let's just film this thing and see how it goes. Purebred Dairy Cattle Association puts utter traits as pertaining to high milk yield and longevity. It is worth 40 points of the total score. That's what's up, yo. Utter death is the most important tree because the deeper the udder is, the more likely the cow is going to get hurt. And that messes up the cow's swag. That ain't good, bruh. Okay, and now how we measure utter depth is on the hock. If it's up high above the hock, see, that's good, bruh. That, that's, that's real good. If it's like at the hock, man. Nah. If it's below hawk, uh, we don't want none of that. None of that. Now the rear rider dog, now that makes up 60% of the milk. The rear rider needs to be very wide and high. The more capacity this rear rider has, the more milk she can produce, and the more bling bling that cow can bring in. All right now dog, when you look at the cow from the rear, you should be able to see the udder divided in half by the median suspensory ligament. The stronger the ligament is, the longer that udder will be lasting, bruh. All right now, bruh, for udder attachment, that should be snug and tight, blending smoothly right into the body wall. The stronger that attachment is, the longer that udder will last. Now you know, bruh, that teeth should be placed squarely on the bottom of each quarter. For, that's for the ease of taking up the milkers. Now you don't want the teeth to be placed too close together or too far out. That ain't be good, bruh, nah, nah. Those teeth should be cylindrically shaped and about medium length. So it's like the width of your thumb and the length of your pinky finger. That's all you need. All right, now you see swag is good, but when it's coming from an udder, you don't want no swag. All four of those quarters, they should be balanced, you know, bro? They need to be like chilling with each other. Matt, come on, we need to get this done. All right, all right. I'm talking about dairy character, and man, do I love a girl who is skinny and knows how to work. And as you can see, She's angular, and she's a producing a lot of milk. When viewing the ribs, that them ribs should be wide and slanted downwards to the rear. To check the width of the ribs, you should put your fingers between each rib, and as you can see, you can fit three fingers. When viewing from the rear, the ribs should have a visible curve to them. That is called the spring of rib. And when she has spring and ribs, that means she can sure eat a meal. Next is the chest floor. It should be deep and wide. And man, do I love a girl with a broad chest. The barrel is a measurement of area from behind the crops down to body wall. It should get longer and deeper as you go farther back the cow. The thighs are an indicator of dairiness or the cow's ability to convert feed to milk. And man, are her legs lean. I love a girl with a nice pair of legs. Another indicator of dairiness is the neck. It should be long and smooth blending into the shoulders and it should be free of excess flesh. The easiest way to determine if the cow is angular is to go to the rear of the cow and look over her top line to her withers. The sharper the point, the more dairy the cow. The cow's skin should be thin and loose like hers, showing that the cow is not carrying any excess weight. Comprising a whole 20 points of the cow's scorecard, rear feet and legs are extremely important, just as my stilettos. The ability of a cow to walk comfortably plays a large role. After all, if a girl can't get up and walk in her stilettos, she can't eat. When a cow's walking, her stride should be long and easy, just as if she's gliding across the runway. One of the more difficult traits to evaluate is the angle of the hawk. Ideally, a cow should have a moderate set, not too posty and not too curved. To help you visualize, draw a mental line from the hip to the hoof as the cow stands. If the cow's leg matches this line closely, she's probably too posty. If her leg bows away from the line dramatically, she is probably too set or too sickled. A happy medium is what's preferred. When viewed from the rear, legs should be straight with no bowing or angle. When viewing the heel of a cow, there should be a lot of space between the hairline and the base of the hoof, just as on this stiletto. 
looking from the side. Draw a line from the hooks to the pins. Then draw two lines, one from the hook, one from the pin, to the thurl. If these two lines are equal, the thurl is centrally placed, which is ideal. The farther back the thurl is placed, the farther back the cow will stand on her heels, which leads to sore hocks and feet. Look at the lower part of the rear leg. This part should be flat and well-defined. Just as girls' calves should be skinny and looking good. Pasterns should be strong but flexible and provide adequate support for the leg and the hoof. The frame category evaluates the skeletal parts of the meow, except for the rear feet and legs. Meow. From the rear, the hip and pin bones should be wide to accommodate the passage of a calf through the birth canal. Meow. From the side, there should be a slight slant from hooks to pins. Meow. <coughs> Sorry, hairball. Width of the front end is important, as is the straightness and squareness of the front legs. Meow. The shoulder blades and elbows should be smooth and snug against the cow's sides and the crop should be full and blend smoothly. Evaluate height from the withers or the hips. Consider age and breed when evaluating stature. The back should be straight, long, and strong across the top. Evaluate breed characteristics as well, focusing mainly on the meow's head. <laughs> she should have a wide muzzle, large nostrils, and a strong jaw. So this specimen shows exactly what the rump should not look like. If you evaluate, the pins are far lower than the hooks. Not a very good example of a dairy animal. Additionally, he stand, she stands very short at the withers. Ideally, an animal of, of its age should be at least this tall. Additionally, for an animal that's two years old, this cow does not show enough volume and capacity to the udder. Ideally, you would see a much higher, wider rear udder attachment and you know, some evidence of an udder to begin with. As you can see, this cow lacks dairy character about the head and neck. She's far too Roman in her nose and is too narrow in the muzzle. Although admittedly, for everything this dairy cow lacks in correctness of frame, I will grant that she has exceptional rear feet and legs. Can you get down so that I can get... There we go. How do you swag up? Like this? That's fine. I'm sorry! Now then. <laughs> She's trying to tell me what to do. Dude, I should have bought my Kanye glasses. Next is the chest floor. It should be deep and wide. Hold on. Man, do I... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> can you get like one step closer to her? I'm hacking up a real hairball. Okay. <laughs> Pasterns should be strong but flexible and should provide adequate. <laughs> when looking at the cow <laughs> stride should be long and easy like you're gliding across the mo oh, what's it called catwalk the, what's it called runway, catwalk. the runway <laughs> Lewis would be the catwalk that was a still picture but whatever are you video Um, Denise, can you hold this again, please? You did a good job the first time. Hello. Julie! Yeah, shush up, cats. Okay, whatever you're ready. You ready? I'm gonna around on the other side. So yeah, that's that what I was thinking. There we go. Right in front of me. Okay. <laughs> that's perfect! Okay. Never mind. Will you stop it? What are you doing? <laughs>